Hello, hello. I want to welcome you to our virtual service. I'm going to start with an opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing day that you have given us. We thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you will do for us. God, we just stand in expectation for today. We stand with our tent doors open to receive what you have for us. We stand and wait patiently because we know that you have a word for us today. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We thank you, God, for all the mothers under the sound of my voice. We thank you for them. And God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today. And again, happy Mother's Day. Again, happy Mother's Day. Welcome to our virtual audience. I'll do a few announcements for you. Um, the House of Prayer, remember, is every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. House of Prayer. You can call in. Um, you can have your prayer requests made known. We will pray together in this sanctuary um, at 9.35. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure that you are here. The Summer of Hope um, helping our people exercise. This is going to be exciting. A two-month exercise program sponsored by the health ministry. For June and July, more information coming. If you want to live the healthier life, you want to be a part of this. Okay? Save the date for Girl Code, a one-day empowerment, 6 to 12 grades in July, more information coming. So if you have a daughter, a granddaughter, someone, a, a girl between that age, um, 6 to 12 is the grade level. Be a part of that. Be a part of that. And now I'll welcome our apostle, Danny L. Williams, and give him a virtual applause. Thank you so much. So the Tawana, what a powerful time. We honor God today for those of you who are watching us and a part of this virtual service. It's always our desire and our hope that you would be able to join us in our in-person gathering. You're so valuable to us as a part of not just this ministry, but a part of the body of Christ and a part of humanity. So come join us. Anytime you hear about an in-person service here at the Citadel, we'll be honored. We count it a blessing. Trust me, it is your presence that make the fragrance of our gathering so much more potent and so much more powerful. So join us. Of course, you've just heard some exciting announcements by Sister Thawana. Some things that happen here, <clears throat> excuse me, on the campus of the Citadel. Those great things that are going to empower and bless your life. You want to be a part, and I know your life is going to be blessed. Of course, we also want you to be aware that each Wednesday this month is what we call our May break. This is a time that we've set aside for a time of refreshing, a time of relaxation. And so we're on a kind of a service sabbatical, both in person and virtually. So I hope you're really enjoying your Wednesdays. I hope you have an opportunity to connect with your family, your friends, and do those things that are healthy, those things that are rejuvenating to your spirit, your soul, your mind, and your body. I want you to know how blessed we are on this special day to celebrate all of our wonderful, wonderful mothers. Wow, you are incredible. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. I'm sure that your day is going to be filled with opportunities of, of commemorations and a celebration and appreciation. I want to give you the biggest hug I can. Oh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of expressing to you 
a very profound Happy Mother's Day. Of course, right after this service, we're going to be uh, gathering together with these VIPs, these mothers, for what we call faith, fellowship, and food trucks. This is a time that the men of this ministry have joined together to express to all of our mothers a very profound appreciation by way of food trucks. And so you still got a few moments to get up out of where you are, mother, and come join us on the campus for faith, fellowship, and food truck. It's going to be powerful, I promise you, in the name of the Lord. Well, I want to share with you the word of the Lord. Thank you to uh, Minister Jeremy, who's accompanying us tonight. We bless you today, rather. We bless God for him and for all of you uh, that's doing a phenomenal job in media and various parts of this incredible gathering. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Father, we're so grateful tonight for the opportunity to share in your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us in these few moments we have together this day to share the gospel and to have a moment of empowerment and enlightenment. Bless every mother that's watching us now. I pray that they will be blessed and strengthened and encouraged. I pray that they will be empowered. I pray that they will be rewarded for the labors of love to their families. Some, Father, that's listening to me now may not receive all that they deserve, but you, Holy Spirit, said in the Word that you're not unmindful to forget our labors of love and how that we have ministered and do minister to your people. Bless these mothers, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you from a subject and a word that I trust will bless and empower your life, that will make you better, not only on this Mother's Day, but in the days, the weeks, the months, and I hope the years to come. I want to talk to you on fortify your life. Fortify your life. You know, we're living in a time, we're living in a moment, we're living in a season where it seems as though things are falling apart all around us. Seem for some of us that the more we labor and the more we try, and the more effort we put into just living life, it seemed as though life seemed to be falling apart. Some of us that are listening to me this morning, that you're right now in a crossroad of whether to continue on or to give up. Whether you press in or you press the out button. I pray today that this word will help you, that this word will give you a source of strength and encouragement and that you will leave this service this morning with the unction and the attitude that the Lord has come to do us well. Fortify your life when it looks like your life is not manifesting what you desire, when it looks like you find yourself pulling and trying to just survive, fortify your life. When it looks like your family's going array, and looks like things are going contrary to God's promises and God's prophetic word to your life, fortify your life. When it looks like your finances are coming unraveled and seem as though you're living not from check to check, but from coin to coin. Fortify your life. What does fortify mean? It literally means to strengthen. It literally means to make stronger. It literally means to encamp, to bring about a sense of security, a sense of safety. Fortify your life. Family, 
I want you to know today that in spite of and regardless of what life may look like right now, God and only God will help you to fortify your life. Let's go into the word of the Lord this morning and let's see what God will say to us. How do you fortify your life? How do you keep it together when it's falling all apart? How do you not just have a pretentious, a pseudo, a fake, and a phony smile? How your life can literally be healed, healthy, happy, and whole, fortify your life. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 7 is where we'll start this morning. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 27. This passage of scripture is our intro to the recipe and the remedy to how to fortify your life. Jesus says, look at the text, family, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 27. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Let me pause right there. Because Jesus is emphatically saying to us that just saying you are a Christian, just saying you are Lord, just saying you are saved, is not it. No family. There's got to be evidence to our confession. You got to remember that. That regardless of what someone say, don't just take what they say as the conclusion of the matter. You've got to see evidence to their confession. That's what Jesus is saying. He is saying, I'm not impressed, paraphrasing. He said, I'm not impressed by you saying, Lord, Lord. He's saying, that doesn't move me. That's not going to assure you getting to heaven. But he who doeth the will of the Father. Look at the next verse, verse 42. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Man, every time I read that portion of scripture, it calls me to do a heart check. It calls me to do a life check. Because Jesus is saying to us very clearly that don't think that you can do all this stuff as a guarantee that you're going to get to heaven. No, family. He is literally saying to us, the evidence of your confession is the lifestyle that you live. Jesus said that they're going to stand before him. Can you imagine? People who are doing all of this stuff around the world in the name of him. Folks who are declaring, I prophesy, I'm casting out devil. I've done this and I'm doing that for God. I'm telling you, family, hear Pastor William this morning. Hear me very clearly. When we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, there's going to be an absolute seating shock. Hear me again. There's going to be a seating shock when we get to heaven. What's the seating shock, Pastor? A lot of folks that we think are going to be sitting up front, up front, in the honor seat, are not going to be the ones. There are going to be people who names may not be known, don't have television ministry, don't fly on private planes, don't have all of the amenities of life and ministry, but in their heart, they love God passionately. In their heart, they love God with every fiber of their being. Brothers and sisters, that's the kind of heart you want to have towards God. The heart that whatever you do for him, glory to God, it brings honor and glory and majesty to his name. Fortify your life. Let's go further in the text. Jesus then says, and then will I profess them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, 
You that work iniquity. What a scary text. Jesus said that I'm going to say publicly when you read in the Amplified. Jesus is saying, I'm going to say publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commandment. Wow. What an indictment that's going to happen. It is one thing for people to say in the church, I don't know who you are. It's another thing for people to say at work, I don't even know who you are. It's one thing for people in your community to say, I don't know who you are. You can live, you can get by, but what do you do? What will you do if Jesus said to you, I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you because what you did was not from a right heart. It was done. Watch the text. You can do the right thing, but have the wrong heart. Are you hearing me? You and I can do the right thing, but have the wrong heart. Jesus want you and I to know today that you and I don't have to let our lives go to pieces. I'm going to share with you in a few moments on how to fortify your life, strengthen your life. You know, family, the day that we're living in, listen to Pastor William. I know there are a lot of people that are preaching and prophesying and declaring and decreeing a lot of great things and good things, but the other side of the balance is that don't miss this point. There is not enough just to hear the promises of God. We must also be mature in the process of God. Hear me? That the world is not going to get better. The life is not going to get easier in a lot of quarrels. There are a lot of things that's transpiring politically, economically, racially. A lot of things that are happening, some known and some unknown. And if you and I are going to stand and be sane in this unseen time, we've got, listen to pastor, you've got to fortify your life. You're going to have to bring your life to a point that, watch the text, watch this, watch this now, that your life can withstand the storm. Do you get that? Your life can and must withstand the storms. No, brothers and sisters, this is not a time for a meltdown. This is not a time to go underground. This is not a time to resign mentally. This is not a time to tap out and to punch out. This is a time to fortify your life. This is a time to tighten the boats. This is a time to dot the I's and cross the T's. This is the time to make sure, the songwriter said, that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Don't be shaken. Don't be disturbed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disillusioned. When Jesus said, when you hear of certain things that's going to be happening on the earth, Jesus says, don't get shaken. He said, look up, because your redemption <laughs> draws nigh. Oh, family, I want to tell you that I've come with good news. I've come with exhortation today to help all of us, including pastors. Let's fortify our lives. Let's make sure our lives are stronger. Let's make sure that our lives do not become unraveled. So, look what he says. He says, on in this text, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man which buildeth his house upon a rock. I'm going to show you how to build your house in a few moments. That's what Jesus said. He said, let me tell you, if you want to be wise, build your house on something solid. If you want to be wise, build your house on a rock. If you want to be able to stand 
when the storm is raging and the wind is blowing, if you want to know how to stand when you're getting bad news, if you want to know how to stand when you're getting bad emails and bad texts, when it looks like families, relationships are going array, if you want to know how to stand, Jesus said you got to build your house on a rock. You got to have more than fluff. You got to have more than a pretty shout. You got to have more than a nice outfit. You got to have more than a nice home to live in, a nice car to drive. You're going to have to make sure your life is built on a rock. And I'm here to tell you today, family, with every fiber of Pastor William Blue, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Fortify your house. Fortify your life. Do some inventory when I get finished and make sure that your house, your life is built on a rock. Some of you sitting here now, you're some, you're sitting here this morning and you may feel like you're so overwhelmed. You may feel like people did you wrong. You may feel like somebody hurt you and you sit there and still licking wounds from 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Why? Because you did not build your house on a rock. But you're going to fortify your house because look what Jesus said. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine and do it them shall be likened unto a foolish man. Every man that doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Here's the question. What is your life built on? What is your life built on? Is your life built on relationship with people? Is your life built on the kind of job that you have? Is your life built on the kind of social club that you connected with? Is your life built on some lodge, some, some, uh, some organization? Is your life built on sand? If your life is built on sand, Jesus said anyone who builds his life on sand is a foolish man. Wow, don't throw rocks at me. Don't throw rocks, get on the rock. I'm trying to tell your family, here it is. How do you build, how do you fortify your life? How do you do it, Pastor William? How do I make sure that regardless of whether the winds come and the rain to sin, when it's all said and done, I'm going to stand. How do I make sure that if I go through the fiery furnace, I'm coming out? If I go through the lion's den, I'm coming out. If I face a giant, I'm coming out. How do I make sure? Fortify your life. Number one, how you do it, you got to fortify the foundation. You got to fortify the foundation. You got to strengthen the foundation. You got to strengthen. Listen to Pastor Williams. A lot of us think we own a solid foundation. A lot of us think that we have a solid grip. No family, no. I listened today to a testimony of a young lady. Uh, she's a well-known singer, and she was testifying how that she thought she knew God once upon a time. She thought she had the relationship with God once upon a time. And then the storms came, calamities hit her life. Her jaw was broken. Her body was severely injured. She could not sing or talk. For, for a long period of time. And she said at that moment, that's when she realized she did not have a true revelation of who Jesus is. Perhaps that's your question. Perhaps that's your dilemma. Perhaps your life is too full of fluff. Time something happens. Time someone don't treat you right. Time something don't go your way. You're the first one to want to resign, pull the covers over your head, and say, I can't take it. That's because... Your life is not on a fortified foundation. Look what he says in 2 Timothy 2 and 19. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are here. Glory to God. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. God knows 
what you're standing. Man, code up our shot. Excuse me. God knows the foundation. He knows whether or not you're really anchored in him. I want to tell you, family, we can fool the devil. We can fool our friends. We can fool families. But you can't fool God. God knows exactly what you're standing on. He knows what you're made of. That's why we can come to him and say, God, you know what? I need you to help me. Somebody listening to me this morning right now, you need to stop faking it. You need to lay aside your title, lay aside your status, lay aside your this accomplishment, and tell God honestly, God, I ain't got. That's right. I said I ain't got what I said I got. And let God give you a solid foundation. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure. Stand without a doubt. Stand without shaking. Stand without wavering. God's foundation. Koda Manasho. Never, never shake. Look what he says in Psalms 1, Psalms 11, in verse 3. Psalms 11, verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? How are you going to stand if you don't have foundation? How are you going to stand if you don't know what you believe and who you believe? How are you going to stand? How, how are you going to go through if you not have, have not already made up in your mind what you're going to be before you go through? No. If the foundation, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Number one, fortify your foundation. Know what you're standing on. Know who you believe in. Know who you are in God. Know who God is in you. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. Number two, you got to fortify your walls. Oh, my God. You got to fortify your walls. Yeah, you, got, you can't live your life with all these open windows. You cannot live your life where everything has access to your everything. Wow, that's good right there. I'm going to say that again. You cannot live your life where your everything, where everything has access to your everything. You got to fortify your walls. Look what he says in Proverbs 25 and verse 28. Proverbs 25 and verse 28 says this. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Look at the text, fam. If you don't know how to rule your spirit, your walls are open. If you, don't, if you let everything into your everything, your walls are broken down. If you let everything get in your ear, if you let everything get in your mind, everything come out of your mouth, everything come before your eyes, your walls are broken down. And you're like, Proverbs said you are like, a city that has been broken down. Why? Because you don't know how to rule your own spirit. Oh, let that sink in. Family, you got to get control of your spirit. This morning, you've got to make up your mind, God, if I'm going to fortify my life, I got to stop letting everything into my everything. I've got to put up some wall. Put up some wall. Fortify your wall. I'm not talking about your family. I'm not talking about your children. I'm talking about your life. Fortify your life. Rule your spirit. The scripture teaches us you got to command your spirit. Glory to God. Look what he says in Proverbs 18 and 10. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a what? Strong tower. Code out my nail shot. The righteous run into it and is safe. How? How do you fortify your wall? You make sure that your life is locked up in Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it. And they'll say, you want to know how to fortify your wall? Know who your God is. Look what he says in Psalm 61 and verse 3. I love the text. Here it is, family. Here it is this morning. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from who? The enemy. Whew. 
Glory to God, for thou hast been a shelter for me. How do you fortify your life? You fortify the, the foundation, you fortify the wall. May you lock your life up. Don't you let nobody talk you into experimenting with no other idols, no other God. Don't sit there and talk about, do you see the light? Do you see the light? Do you feel the energy? All this, all this idolatrous, secular, humanistic, new ageism. No, no, no. You make absolutely sure that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's my wall. That's my wall. I'm not ashamed. I'm not intimidated. You believe what you want to believe? Let me know how that work, up for you, work out for you in eternity. But as for me and my house, I believe the scripture literally implies not just those you live with, but as for me and my house, does not the Bible say that we that, that, that the earthly tabernacle of this house, you, you got to decide, Lord, you're my house. Your name is my wall. Your name is what I'm going to dwell in. I'm going to lock myself in you, God. I'm telling y'all that the days that are coming are going to get more dismal, more discouraging, more depressing, and more dark. And if you don't hear what I'm saying today, the Bible lets us know that you are going to be one of those, the scripture says, whose heart is going to fail. Why? Because you're building your house on sand and you are not building your house on a rock. The third thing you got to do, you got to fortify the roof. You got to fortify the roof. Family, you got to fortify. You see, I'm building a house. Foundation, walls, roof. You got to fortify the roof of your life. You, you got to understand the power of <clears throat> who is covering your life. Who is covering your life? Who, who is covering? Because he who covers your life is responsible for your life. Wow. Man, that'll bless you on this Mother's Day. He who covers your life is responsible for your life. If the devil is covering your life, then he's responsible. And you know what he's going to do. The thief coming, but to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus said it like this. I'm paraphrasing. If you let me cover your life, I'm going to give you life and I'm going to give it to you more abundantly. You got to fortify the roof. You got to cover. You got to know who's over your head, who's covering your life, who's protecting your life. He's got to be more than just words that flow out of your mouth that he's a, he's a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's got to be more than rhetoric. That's got to be a revelation that he is going to cover your life. Fortify the roof. Look what he says in Psalm 17 and verse 8. Wow. Look what he says in Psalm 17 and verse 8, family. Look at it this morning. Keep me at the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Glory to God. He said, keep me as the apple of the eye. Now why is that so powerful? Why? Why is that? Why is that so? Because look at, listen to me family. If you, if someone, if someone attempts to put something in your eye, if they attempt to get so close to your eye, if you go to the eye doctor and they want to do something to your eye to check it, they have to hold your eye. Why? Because your eye is built, the lids on your eye have an automatic reflex that anything that gets close to the lid, close to the eyelid, close to the pupil, the eyelid automatically shuts down. It's the body's way of protecting the eye. That's what Iramosha, that's what the psalmist is saying. He is saying that God, glory to God, I feel the anointing. He's saying, God, that you keep me at the apple of your eye. You keep me, God, at the apple. So that if the enemy gets too close to me, you've got a defense mechanism. You're going to shut it down. I declare, glory to God, may the Lord shut down everything that's trying to get close to your life. Every storm, every sickness, every trouble, every tribulation. May the Holy Spirit shut down everything because you are the apple of his eye. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to understand that he got to fortify. He's got to be your protection. He got, no, no, no. Listen to me. God is not obligated to cover those who have not covenanted with him. Whew. Did you get that? If you're not in covenant with him. No, no, I'm not talking about this religious stuff that a lot of people are saying, I know the man up there. No, 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 no. Well, we know Pastor William, we all God's children. No, we're not. No, we're not. How can you say that God loves everybody? Yes, he loves everybody. But we are not all God's children. We are all God's creation. We are God's creation by design. But we are God's children by decision. Whew. Did you get that? You got to make a decision. If you're listening to me, if you're listening to me, you know, I listen to people sometimes and I be talking to them. Man, they just as ranchy and runchy as a, whoo, I almost said the wrong thing. But, but I got to remember, it's Sunday morning. But I'm trying to tell you, they just lay way out there and boy, they're the first one to tell you, oh, praise God. No, 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 going to church. Don't make you his children. What? Mm -mm. What make you his child? Will you make a decision that I'm going to live for him? I'm going to submit my life to him. Then I become the apple of his eye. Then he will hide me under the shadow of his wing. Look at him in Psalm 63 and verse number 7. He says, Psalm 63 and verse 7 says, Because thou has been my help. Woo! Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I reach your God. When you fortify, when he's your roof, you fortify your roof. When he is your help, when he's the one that keeps you at the apple of his eye, he's going to be the one that help you. Man, I'm telling you, when it looks like the devil and the hounds of hell are trying to get the best of you, when you understand glory to God, that he is my help, he is the one that covers and protects me. Man, I'm telling you, listen to Pastor Will. Here's my testimony. Here is my testimony. I'm telling it to you because you're my friend and nobody will listen but you and I on this Sunday morning. I have come to a place in the last few years of pastoring. I've come to a place, my God, where I recognize that, listen to me, listen to me. People come and people go. People smile and people frown. People speak well and people criticize. People bless you on one side and curse you on the other side. But if I stay anchored with him, if I stay anchored with him, if he's my roof, man, I'm telling you that when it looks like it's raining all around me, but long as I stay under his roof, long as I abide under his roof, long as I stay planted under his roof, my God, I may hear the rain. Oh, God, I may even smell the rain. Glory to God. But the rain will not destroy who I am. Look what he says in Psalm 91 and verse 1. Here it is, family. Here it is. Fortify your roof. Here it is. Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come to the O come to the That's my roof. That's what I'm dwelling in. That's what I'm living in. That's my habitation. That's my dwelling place. He's my tabernacle. He's my sanctuary. He's my temple. Come on now. He's my rock. He's my, he's the one that I dwell under when it looks like life is trying to freeze me out and the weight of life is trying to crush me. If I just stay anchored beneath him, don't you ever let the devil make you feel like that God has not come through for you. God is your roof. Number three, four. Number four, you got to fortify the electric. I'm getting out of this. You got to fortify the electric. If you're going to fortify your life, make sure you got the power. What good is it? What good is it to have a nice home with no power? What good is it to have a nice house, but there's no power in it? You don't want to live like that. What good is it to have a beautiful home you live in, nice car you drive? What good is it to wear nice clothes and still have no power? What good is it to go to work nine to five and come home miserable because you don't have power? 
Fortify your power. Fortify your electorate. Get engaged with the Holy Spirit. Let him do for you what he wants to do. Let him make you like he wants to make you. Look what he says in John 1, verse 11 through verse number 13. John 1, verse 11 through 13. I don't have time to read it all, but look what Jesus says. He literally is saying that, watch this. He said he came unto his own and they did not receive him. But what does he do? To as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Woo! Glory to God. You want to walk in power? Make him your source. You want the, your life to go to another? You want to fortify your life? Make sure you're rock, walking in power. Make sure you're operating in power. Make sure you're living in power. If you want your life to be blessed, get in power. That's what he says in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. You know the text. It's the anchor text that we use here at the Citadel in so many of our declarations. Here it is. Jesus himself said, he says this, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. What is a witness? One who can testify with evidence. That's what it is. One who can testify with evidence. I'm a witness that his power is real. I'm a witness that what Jesus said he can do, he can do it. You got to fortify your electric. Get yourself plugged into power. Pastor William, how do I get power? How do I connect to the power source? How do I connect with the power source? Lean into the Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in his word. Come on. Just let things go that does have no bearing. Die to your flesh. Die to yourself. Come alive in him. You shall be his witnesses. And finally, family, how do I fortify my life? You fortify your life. Watch this. You got to fortify the water. You got to fortify the water. <laughs> Once you build a foundation, once you strengthen the walls, once you strengthen the roof, once you got power going through your life, make sure you got water. Make sure you got this water flowing. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39, family. I'm closing. Here it is. Jesus is at the feast. He's there celebrating. And the Bible says, that on the last day of the feast, Jesus looked up, he stood up, and he cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, look at what he said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I come to be your shot. Woo! He say that there's going to be an unlimited supply of his spirit. An unlimited flow of his presence. You want to fortify your life? Man, get to the point where the water of the spirit just flow. Learning how, don't throw rocks at me, learning how to pray in the spirit. Learning how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Learning how to lean into the Holy Spirit. Don't just say it out of your lips because pastor said, but say it with conviction. The Holy Spirit is my best friend. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love the Holy Spirit. Oh, the time when it looks like I'm, I'm just at, at the end of my strength journey. But he comes in and he gives me a water supply. He, he does what the scripture says. The scripture says, oh, in Psalm 63, my final verse of scripture, Psalm 63 and verse 1. Look what he said. The Holy Spirit would do this for you. He would do this for your mother. He'll do this for you. He'll do this for your children. He'll do this for, your, for you, Father. He'll do it for you. If you fortify the water, Psalm 63 and 1 said, oh, God. Thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. 
My flesh longeth for thee. In what? In a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. Wow. The psalmist is saying, I'm thirsty. It may look like things are dry all around me, but if I get thirsty, he's going to flow out of my belly, out of my spirit. You want to know how to fortify your life in the days to come? You want to know how to stand firm and stand strong in the days to come? You got to fortify your foundation. You got to fortify your walls. You got to fortify your roof. You got to fortify your electric, your power, and you got to fortify the water. Get yourself rooted in him. Get yourself anchored in him. Listen to pastor. I'm getting ready to pray with you. I'm getting ready to pray for you, but I don't want to pray some religious prayer this morning. I want to pray with you that you will fortify your life. That you, Kandana Moshata, will not live your life on sand. That you won't live your life vulnerable to disappointments. I heard the story of Corey Tim Boone. I heard this story. She was a German, and her family. He had a lot of the Jews. He had Jews during the Holocaust, during the time of the Holocaust. They arrested Corey and her family, put them in a consecration camp because they helped the Jews. She witnessed the atrocities to the Jews and to her family. She was the only one that survived. But she tells the story of how she had to forgive. How she had to let things go. Why? Because she recognized she could not go to heaven with unforgiveness. And God used her and her husband in an incredible way to touch the world with the love of Jesus and his saving grace. Listen to Pastor Williams. Listen to me. Every now and then, even the best of houses need some attention. I don't care how new the house is. I don't care how new it constructed it is, or if it's new to you because you just bought it or moved into it or whatever the case may be, that house still needs some attention. The yard, the roof, over time, it's going to need to be changed. The foundation is going to need to be secure so that it does not start uh, declining. The walls have to be sure that so they don't start crumbling. Everybody needs a moment of fortification. I want to pray with you. And I want to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. I want to ask him to help you. Now, you may be listening to me this morning, and you need to be saved. Young, old, boy, girl, your life, your house is on the sand right now, and you need it to be on the rock. Jesus is that rock. He, he, he will accept you. He will take you just as you are. But pastor, my foundation is cracked. My walls are crumbling. My roof is leaking. My power is not working. And my water is contaminated. What can Jesus do with my life? Give you a life build over. So I want to pray with you if you're not saved. And then if you're not a part of a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching ministry this morning, I want to encourage you to get connected with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. 
No, I didn't say just put your name on a roll. I didn't say attend every now and then. I didn't say join and then months later or year later you see the pastor say, I'm still a member. No, I'm talking about being consistently connected to a Bible-believing, bible to You need a community of faith. You may not think of like, like a lot of young folks, go, I, don't, I don't need nobody, I'm this and that. No, I don't care. I don't care how new your house is. If you don't give it some attention, it's going to start declining. Don't wash your windows and see how long you can look out of them. Don't clean up your house. Let water just sit there and just sit on your roof and see whether or not it start leaking. Let it just stay around the wall and see whether or not mold won't start building. No, your house needs attention. So connect with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Fortify your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now for every person listening to me under the sound of my voice. I pray for mothers, not just because it's Mother's Day, but I pray for mothers whose houses need to be fortified. I pray for fathers whose houses need to be fortified. I pray, Father, for sons and daughters. I pray for your people. Some who have abandoned and neglected their spiritual houses. Your words say, if this house, this tabernacle were dissolved, so it's possible, God, that our houses can dissolve. But you, God, giving us a word today that let us know we can fortify our houses, that we can't go along just saying, Lord, Lord, and our houses are being dilapidated. It's those, Father, you said, that live by your word. Now do it for us. Right where you are, make a commitment to Jesus. Will you do that? And do us a favor, if you don't mind, sir, ma'am, I know this message spoke to you because some of you have been so busy building an earth house until you have forsaken your eternal house. Call. There's a number that will be on this screen. Call and let us know. Pastor Williams, I pray with you and I ask Jesus to fortify my house. I ask him to be the Lord of my life. Pastor Williams, I would like additional prayer. Call the Hope Prayer Shelter Live. will be available to you. Let us pray with you. It is our joy. No, we don't count beans. We don't sit there and say, yeah, we had 50 people call in. So who got time for that? We just want to love on you and help you to be what Jesus wants you to be. So give us that call. And if you want to be a part of this ministry, I'd love to be your pastor. Not because of quantity, but because of quality. I want to help you. I want to help you to build a life that's fortified. So when the winds come, and they're going to come. When the rains come, they're going to come. Your life will be able to stand. And it won't be built on sand. Amen. Well, before we leave this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to stand with this ministry through your giving and support. I want you to know that I don't have to be timid when I say it. When you, sow your, when you give your tithe and when you sow your seed and when you give your no limit seed, you give it into good ground. This ministry is doing more than just local missions ministry. We do that. 
but we're touching people in different parts of the world. So every time you tithe, every time you give, every time you sow a no limit seed, you're helping us to touch children in Ogon State, Nigeria. 90 plus children, 50 or 21 staff people, you're helping us. We're in the process now of building a 1,500 square foot hall. This is after we built some 8,000 square feet of education buildings and daycare buildings. Now we're building this hall for children to have additional means of empowerment. We know that you're going to stand with us like the church in Koji State, Nigeria. That's growing. People are being saved with the loving gospel of Jesus. Every time you tithe, give a soul, no limits. You're helping to do those kind of ministry. Like the 120 plus children in Haiti who are being served by teachers that we support. Not only serving, helping the teachers by helping to feed those children who sometimes their only meal is the meal that they give at school. Not only that, but locally, we do things. You say, well, what are y'all? We do things. You're just not going to see Pastor Williams taking pictures of people and every little thing we do. God put it out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. No, the Bible said when you do all those kind of things, you have your reward already. You already have your reward. So we're not going to be the kind of church, and we're not the kind of church to sit there and tell you every little thing we do for every little body, every little movie. No, I'm not condemning anybody who does it. If that's their gasoline, let it run their engine. I'm simply telling you that Jesus himself said, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. What you do in secret, he'll reward you openly. So, tithe. Return to the Lord as tithe. Then sow a good offering. And then stand with us with our no limit seed as we are declaring and decreeing debt free. The giving platforms are on the screen that you can follow and do what you know pleases God. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. You're giving to a good ministry in good ground and the Lord will do you good because of it. Well, family, it's been a blessing to be with you this morning and I know that the word of God says something to you. I want you to Again, remember the announcements that have been given to you. And I want you to know that I'm looking forward to seeing you in person the next time we gather in person. And on that note, here it is. You know what I'm going to do now. That's right. Say it with me. May the thoughts of God be in my mind. May the vision of God be in my eyes. May the voice of God be in my ears. May the word of God be in my mouth. May the love of God be in my heart. May the touch of God be on my hands. And may the presence of God be on my life. In Jesus' name, I'll see you next time right here at the Citadel of Hope. Bye-bye.